Wow. What an incredible time. Incredible time. I, I just need to say to our guest, Liz asked, do you guys always dress up like this every Sunday? I said, I assure you they don't. Um, and our staff, and uh, you guys have spoiled us and continue to do so through this month, um, and we appreciate that. I am looking forward really to next week. Today's great, but today is about what happens next week. Not that I'm leaving. That's not what it's about. They told me just drop the mic and say he has left the building. <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about handing over to an amazing young couple who are going to take this church from strength to strength. And that's what a legacy is about. And these guys have spoiled us. Um, spoiled us rotten, but we're so grateful also for our staff and everything they've done, but also for our, our family, Eric and Ryan and Jensen, Judah, Jono, Sarah. We, David and Chris and Anton and Jody and the girls are our family. We all talk with funny accents, but they're our family. Um, and our special guests, we, we're really thankful for you folk who are here and those that are watching. So many couldn't be here and sent messages. We got flowers and messages and gifts sent from churches in the city and beyond. And uh, don't send any more flowers. It's starting to smell like a funeral home at our house. <laughs> you know, it's, it, but we're just so grateful. You know, special guests like Pastors Marty and Margot, we've been doing the journey for a long time together in the city and you guys are great friends and we love you. Ashley and Lorraine, just remember years, what, 20-something years ago, talking about planting a church and, and all that was in that. And Andrew and Catherine Halliburton, known them for ages. You guys are champions. And, of course, pastors Rick and Sue Prosser, um, just absolute legends, and we know that. And some of you have traveled to be here today, and we're thankful. Dr. Ian and Jeannie Jagelman, I said last night at dinner, remember back in 2004, 16 years ago, we, we had our conference, No Limits. Anybody remember that? Yeah. yeah. And we sat off to the side in the wing over at Fraser Parade, and we talked about, should we come into the, to the C3 movement? And Ian Jagelman, in his classic way that he does, why do you want to be a part of C3? He was doing that, playing the devil's advocate, making sure we knew that this was God, because that's what Dr. Jagelman's always about. Um, and... Uh, and Jeannie just, oh, stop it, Ian. And she starts telling us all the good things about C3. And Janet and I, on an anniversary, they can't get over this, Americans on a wedding anniversary went to their house, spent the, uh, the weekend with them, and went to the cricket. Yeah. Right. We got to see Ricky Ponting, hit a ton, but incredible friends that we love and amazing leaders. Ian was saying they've just finished up recently. The old Czech Repu Republic spent how many years there, Jeannie? 18, you said almost 20 doing ministry with pastors after they were able to get in there when the Iron Curtain, their champions, been in and out of China and all over the world for the kingdom of God. And Pastor Steve and Debbie White, people we love and uh, totally respect and had a great time in Myanmar, didn't we? Yeah, that, was, that was cool. That was awesome. And, uh, and of course, my longest friend in Australia. Give me a minute. Andrew. Friends for 39 years. And we've been through all kinds of things together. I remember the first time I ever heard this phrase, we went, he, he wasn't even a Christian yet, we drove all the way from Wyala to Melbourne through the night to go to a karate tournament and check out stuff. And we go to Chinatown for dinner and Andrew says, it's your shout. I never heard that phrase. I'd only been in the country <laughs> month. And I said, what do you want me to do? He said, shout. I said, listen, I'll pay for dinner, but I'm not standing up and yelling for anybody. <laughs> Victoria and Simon? I'm sorry, but he's a kangaroo's boy. You'll forgive me, but good to have Andrew and Kaya here today. Drove up from Sydney. They live there now. Longest friend in Australia. Knelt in front of his couch in 1982, and he accepted Christ, which was awesome. Became very special. Stop sending me messages. And, of course, Pastor Roger Beard from C3 Great Lakes. Good to have you, champion, and... Ross Caldwell, long-term friend, and Kim's sick today. She was so looking forward to this. Couldn't be here, but thanks for driving down, I have to say, and coming today. Tell the folks at C3 Great Lakes, miss them, love them, thank God for them. And for Rod and Ann Thorpe, so many things we did together in the Middle East, and even here before you went. 
So thank you for coming from Canberra. I hope I haven't missed anybody. If, if so, you can smack me afterwards. But thank you, all of you. Uh, you know, the theme that uh, Pastor Knight chose this month, and I think I got this right, legacy that leads. Is that it? And he's asked each guest speaker to speak on that. And I said, I'm not preaching today. And Lorraine said, if I knew you were preaching last, your last sermon last week, I would have come. Stop it, people. Janet, what are you doing? Are you telling me? I did mention David and Chris, didn't I? Oh, I am sorry. She, they said I did. Oh, sorry. Also, our long-term friends here. And uh, we're going to walk about together as soon as the rain clears. Yeah. None of us are retired. We'll just walk about. That's all we're doing. But today is a day of celebration. We're, I'm not preaching. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary as the senior pastors of Victory. Um, I hope you don't have any pictures of when we first came. Out in the foyer. I ain't going out there. And Joel, you did an incredible job on Sweet Home Alabama. But Janet and I would say it, it has uh, been, it, it's a shame we only get about half of our people here today, but it's been a privilege to serve you and to share life with you for a quarter of a century. Gosh, sounds long, doesn't it? I was five years old when I came. But we literally sat with a board, our executive board talked about this, and we chose this day to be our final day in this role and to hand over the leadership to the next generation. We think that's necessary instead of just hanging on. And, uh, and as I said, the, the, the theme is legacy that leads, and we've been blessed, so blessed. The legacy is, is not found in any monuments you build, any buildings that you bought, um, any kind of special programs you have run. The legacy is in people. Paul said to the Corinthian church, you are our letters, written on our you are his letters, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. And, and we've just been privileged to lead so many great people who here at Victory who are doing incredible things for the kingdom of God and beyond. And so it's a day of celebration and praise. I don't want any of this dirge stuff. Um, and I want to share a psalm that does just that. I'm sorry, I probably didn't get it in in time to get on the screen, so you're going to have to do something novel. Get your Bibles out. Electronic? No, Jody, not coffee. Bible. Okay. <laughs> Special brew. Um, we're going to go to Psalm 145 because this gives praise to God, but it talks to the next generation about His powerful work and what He's done. But here's the deal. If you don't get anything else today, let me give you this phrase. It's mine. A legacy is nothing more than a memory if the generation doesn't take up the story and write the next chapters. Can I say it again? A legacy is nothing more than a memory if the next generation doesn't take up the story and write the next chapters. And that's what we know you're going to do. David reminds us in this psalm of praise that he not only talks about what God has done, but what he's doing and will do. Because if you look at this interplay between his words, God has, God did. But then he switches, God is, and God is doing. So, verse 1, are you there? Got your Bible? Where's Jim? Got your Bible, Jim? You've been quiet, mate. Why? You do every other day. <laughs> what's, what's changed, mate? Be yourself. Here, here we go. I'm reading from the NIV, verse 1. I will exalt you, my King, my God, the King, I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. The best way to start a day is with praise. Praise towards him. Verse 3. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Just have a go. Just try to see if you can get to the bottom of where God is, what he does, how awesome he is. You'll never reach that bottom because it's just deep. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. There are so many stories we could tell of things that God has done. And that's, that's a good thing to do, and it's good to reminisce. But we only reminisce to remind ourselves that he's going to do even greater things. Okay? Verse 5. They. Who's they? The next generation. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. You see his interplay? You have, you will. You have, you will. God, it's never just about the God of the past, but the God of the now and the God of tomorrow. 
He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not preaching. Verse 7. They will celebrate. That's what we're here to do. Your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Everything that has happened is because of him and because of what he's done through you. And I guess I was going to say next week, but just in case I forget, I'm confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day, until the day of Jesus Christ. Victory is going to go from strength to strength along with other churches throughout this city. Verse 8, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Oh, that's a good one. I need that because uh, I'm sure he'd probably smack me a few times. if that were. Anyway, verse 9, the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. When we first started talking about coming to Newcastle all the way back in 95, we just kept saying to the elders, this is about the kingdom of God. This isn't about just a church. You are just a part of the kingdom of God. You are not the sum total. And we need to focus on the kingdom of God. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll add everything you need. And a church that focuses on the kingdom and not just their agenda, they have the promise he will add to you everything you need. Okay. They will tell. We will tell. The next generation will speak of your kingdom and your might. Why? Watch this. So that all men might know your mighty acts. Why does he do what does he do? To spoil us? To keep us as a, a subculture within the city and keep all the baddies out? And, no. So that everybody in this city will know. Will know. I love it when the Bible says, so that. In other words, I'm doing this for this reason. I'm giving you a legacy. I'm giving you a story. I'm giving you my power. So that broken people become healed. Lost people become found. I'm going to quit preaching again. So that all men may know your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. And I love this. The Lord is faithful to his promises and loving toward all he has made. You know, Janet, what's your favorite phrase, honey? Yeah. He is always in control. He's on the throne and he loves me. And she always says to us, especially to me, listen, God's got this. And we would say to victory, God's got this. He's got your future and he's got great things in store. Now, I don't know if Janet's meant to join me now or later after the board. After the board? Sweet. Let me pray for you and pray for all of us because we believe out there is a legacy that leads to the next and the next and the next. Father, we want to thank you. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. But God, you're also mighty and powerful and you do awesome deeds and works, and you have done, you are doing, and you will, done, you will do even more. Because, God, there's a city out there that desperately needs you. There's a nation that needs revival. There's a world that needs your kingdom. And so, Father, today, I think above all else, we want to say thank you. And Jesus, we want to exalt you. You are our king. We have done what we have done because of you, because of what you have done. We thank you so much for the cross. You're so good to us. And we bless you. I bless these people who are here and online, and I bless the churches of this city who are working together to create a place and a space for your kingdom to come with power. And I bless this nation that you called us to, the great Southland of the Holy Spirit, God, I bless it in Jesus' name, believing that the days of revival are coming on this great Southland. And I dare to even believe it's going to happen before the end of my days. So, Father, we want to thank you. Even though in some ways today is an ending, God, it's a beginning. And we look forward to what's happening as we walk through this door, both together and even our own pathway. And we will bless you. We will tell of your mighty deeds and we will tell of your deeds to the generations to come. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Am I handing it to you? Awesome. Good. Yes, you are.
We can put our hands together for our senior minister, Pastor Keith Edwards. Good, buddy. So good. Thank you. Good. I'm going to encourage you to take a seat go. down here next to your wife. I'm going to. Here and uh, what I'm going to do now is something a little bit different. And uh, we're, we're going to interview some couples who have been very blessed over their time at C3 Church Victory by the amazing Pastor Keith and Pastor Janet Edwards. So firstly, I'm going to get uh, Todd and Kiri Oliver to come out to, to grab a seat over here. And we're going to have a few little chats. So uh, come over, guys, Thank and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing what you have to say to these. Me these too. These. <laughs> totally unscripted. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you, you, yeah, we haven't sat down and gone through everything, but you've been prepared. So, uh, yeah. well, like, when did you come on the scene? When did you meet Pastor Keith and Janet first? Like, what was your first moment? Uh, day one. Day one. Day one. At the at the welcome. Yeah, well, for me it was a bit earlier. I, I can recall m moving you into a house that we, we secured for you and discovering Pastor Keith's penchant for everything in the right place <laughs> at that time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's true. First impressions, like what did you, what were your first thoughts when you were like, you encountered them? <laughs> yes. Oh, first thoughts. <laughs> I'm like... What a beautiful family. Like, I saw the extremely daggy video that we filmed to introduce them to the people at our church, and it was exceedingly daggy. I'm like, what a nice family to come to this church, even though that video made it look like, no, in fact, run away. So We, we, we were at the point of raising the bar right from day one. We knew we, knew we needed to, because <laughs> that was so embarrassing. So what was the, do you remember the date? What date was it? Oh. Or the, the year? No. No. <laughs> oh, wait, 1997. Seven. Six. Something. 1990 something. That's good. Yeah. That's six. That one. Six. That, there's a 10 year gap there. That's pretty specific. We had, um, we're old. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we forget things. Okay, like when you think about Pastor Keith and Janet and you are, uh, you're being amused by a funny story, what's, what comes to mind? There's so many funny stories that come to mind. When, when you hang out with someone for 25 years, you build up such a history. I mean, there's the shoe throwing, there's the extremely rude things that I've said over the time, and you know, they've just been gracious and forgiving. Because you know, I think I'm funny, and my brain circumvents my mouth, and I'm just suddenly saying something that is actually wildly inappropriate. So all of these moments flood into my mind. Right. Right. What about you, Todd? <laughs> Again, there's so many. A lot of them, though, I think involve shopping um, and, and the experiences of shopping with Keith. Uh, but, they also, but then for Pastor Janet, it's, it's, it's wonderful experiences in, on stage in worship um, and, yeah. and, you know, doing that for, I, I don't know how many years we, we worship led together, but uh, to do that, what a privilege. Um, for, for plastic. And there were some funny times as well, like, you know, millions of spiders hatching on the stage I and mean, landing on all of us. That I was really that. fun. Um, it, 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 ugh, I shake now. Um, so many, many stories. But look, you know what? The, the undercurrent is they're, they're all good times and they're, they're all precious. Yeah. Right, right. Anything else from the early days you want to share or...? Oh, uh, at the welcoming ceremony, there were balloons. There was a ceremony? Balloons. Yeah, there was a thing, and there was an archway of balloons at Fraser Parade, and, you know, everyone's like, welcome, welcome. Oh, there were probably right. snacks. It was nice, I'm sure. And there were helium probably balloons. Slice. So I decided to welcome our new pastors by <laughs> sucking helium or argon into my lungs and welcoming them with, Pastor Keith and Janet, we're very pleased that you've come to Victory, and we hope you have a wonderful time over the next 25 years. <laughs> and still they're here. <laughs> So as you go out today, ladies and gents, you've got some helium book. No, we're not going to do that today. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can tell who's, there's some people up in the back corner here who'll probably grab those after the service. Oh, I'm for sure, for sure. Okay, let's talk about um, legacy and the, the impact over 25 years that Pastor Keith and Janet have had in your lives personally and your family, and Todd, you're not allowed to make me cry. That's the only rule I have today, is don't make me cry, all no right? No promises there, okay. Okay, all no right. No promises, all right. You want to go first? So, something that I always think of when I think of Pastor Keith is purpose, and so when I met him, something that struck me was 
the look in his eyes. Like, his eyes are very blue and very clear. And I feel like when he's looking at you, he's not so much looking at you as looking through you <laughs> to this purpose that is behind you. Wow. So it's this sense of wow. purpose. So, you know, yeah. when he's looking out over this church, you can see that purpose that he's seeing, that future that he's wow. seeing. And that's, and that's something that I think of when I think of Pastor Keith. Wow. And when I think of Pastor Janet, what it is... Wait, that's my treat. <laughs> When I think of Pastor Janet, it's prayer. And it's not that, she, like, she has challenged me to pray, to be a prayer, because she leads by example and she is a prayer. Like, she prays so, good. so much for us, uh, us all. And um, just her action and her life has challenged me to be a prayer, like, she is a prayer, and to change the heavens for our family. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot in this, Darren. Okay, just so you know. I'm I know. Gonna, I'm, I've we'll got like it, two we'll more minutes, together. man. So, like, uh -huh. there's there's one thing, and that this, I, I, just so you know, those who don't know, I lost my dad when I was 13 to cancer. Uh, so I I didn't have a stable father figure, and then and then this bloke lobs up, and just becomes that. Didn't ask him. He didn't ask me. I didn't ask him. It just happened, and um, you know, you, you'll never know. Uh, and I think that's the thing about legacy. You'll never know the impact that you've had on my life and that that's transcended now to my children. Um, you know, and it, it, it is about legacy because I know that what I've taken from you and you've given to me, I get to hand off. It's not mine. I just steward it for the next person. Wow. And I think that's, that's, if I could put it in a nutshell, that is exactly what it is. You know, it, it comes around to that. I didn't have a stable father figure. I didn't have a spiritual father. I had a relationship with God. I was a dead set rat bag. I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, you, by example, yep. pointed me in the right way. Um, you smacked me around the head a couple of times, and that's fine because I needed it. Um, you forced me into some things I was too afraid to do because fear got in the way. And that's great too because it challenged me to step up and created who I am now. Yep. Um, so that's, you know, without pointing at specific moments, that's exactly what it is. Pastor Janet. Um, I just don't know how to, how to say it. There aren't words. But I will say one thing that will, will just sit with me forever, and that is that Jesus is still on the throne. And every time I think of you, they're the words that come to mind. And I think that's, that's an absolute pleasure to have that memory be the one that comes to mind first when I think about you. All the fun we've had and all the laughs and all the craziness and all the frustrations and everything that's come along that life deals with us, the one thing that, that lands on me with you is that Jesus is still on the throne. Thank you. That's awesome. Hey, um, just a quick show of hands. Uh, if Pastor Keith and Janet are like spiritual parents to you, just lift your hands. Come on, come on, that's awesome. Wow, wow, that's powerful. What a legacy, just in this room and online. You know, I, I see you raising your hand in your room there. Good job, good job, folks. That's awesome. Cool, well, thank you, you two. Is there anything else you wanna share, you wanna add? Uh, in fact, I shouldn't say that because then we'll be here for us sometime. No, right. So uh, can we put our hands together for Todd and Kiri Oliver, legends. Thank you so much, guys. So good. Uh, right now, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Emile and Holly McCabe to come out here. And I'm going to ask them exactly the same questions. And uh, they're just having their microphones wiped down because we're super COVID safe right here at C3 Victory. And uh, they, they're on their way. Oh, we're, actually, we're going to do a video. Good call. Good call, Tamika. Let's go to the screen. Keith and Janet Edwards. Yes. What? 25 years? Yes, amazing. You guys don't even look 25 uh, uh, years old. That's a quarter of a century, babe. Incredible. And in the new year, you're handing over to Nathan and Rachel. We're so yes. proud of you guys. What a transition. Yes. What a legacy. What a succession. Yes. You've done such a great job up there, mm -hmm. Keith and Janet, yes. pastors of of so many people, yeah. of so many leaders, of so many congregations. Yes, yes. and you know, you can do nothing greater than building the house of God. And we celebrate you both today. We wish you every blessing in the future for all that God's got for you both. We do, and uh, we are believing and praying with you yes. that this will not just be the closing of an era and a season or the right. conclusion, but it will be the opening. Yes of an entirely new day. Yes. We see glorious things happening for yes. you, Thank you in God. the future, 
in the name of Jesus, Father, new doors will open, yes. new ideas will come into their mind, yes, Lord. new dreams, new visions even of a great future out ahead. Mm -hmm. And we believe, God, that you'll touch the nations yes. in Jesus' name. God bless you and congratulations again. Hey, Keith and Janet, Pastor Don here from C3 Church in Rabina. We want to say we love you and appreciate you and say thank you to you for your input into our lives and to our church. Thank you for your oversight. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the times we've ridden together. Uh, we love you guys and all the best in this next season of your life. With love from C3 Church Rabina, from Pastor Don and Adrian. Hi there. Hi. We're checking in to celebrate with Pastor Keith and Janet Edwards yes. and C3 Victory Church and the incredible moment that this is. Oh, yes. We celebrate with you 25 years of ministry, wow. Keith and Janet. You are legends. That's right. You have influenced the nation of Australia and many nations into Asia, church planting and training so many people. Wow. And you know what's also great? You've just been an awesome friend to us. Oh, you have. And we love you. Yes, and also you are handing over your church to uh, the next generation yes. leaders pastor nat and rachel who are amazing amazing and they've grown up under your leadership and we just thank you so much for such a wonderful church and friendship and love and we wish you all the best for your future yes we just celebrate with you today yes. and with c3 victory that's right as you go through this transition and we know your future is going to be so bright Oh, and yes. awesome. Love you. Love you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we have uh, Emil and Holly. Thanks for joining me on this uh, platform today. No problem. We're here to honour and, uh, and love on and tell some good stories about our I've senior got a few ministers. Of them. <laughs> and I know that you guys have got some good stories. Before we get to that, um, when. Do, do you remember. <laughs> Do you remember the year that you guys met Pastor Keith and Janet? I don't remember the year. I was 10, I believe, when we, I'm waiting for mum to know it. Yeah, 10 <laughs> years old when I came to right. um, Victory Baptist Church. Yes, true. And true. I just turned 30, so 20 years. 20 years ago. Yeah. That's yeah. so good. What about you, man? I think I was trying to think about it. It's about 17-ish years ago possibly of 17 or 16 years ago and and first impressions like when you met them you were like what am i am i allowed to say mongrel from stage <laughs> well i come to church and someone decided to prophesy over me and say that um the devil's trying to sift me as wheat i believe it was <laughs> wow yep but so, what happened then well i thought oh it's on <laughs> he came to Victory to get away from the shadow of his mum, yeah, a pastor. That's true. I didn't want to be a pastor's kid anymore. <laughs> right, right. And, um, and uh, someone decided to take me under their wing. That's good. How ironic. Because the devil was going to sift you as wheat. <laughs> that's a good call. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, like, any, any early memories apart from, you know, the, that prophetic word? Like, what was some other early stuff that took place? Um... I remember thinking, Pastor Janet is so lovely and soft, and Pastor Keith is so scary. <laughs> That's exact. That was exactly my impression. I walked in and I was like, "This guy's but scary then you realize, as." Oh, he's actually a teddy bear on the inside. Once you get That's past right. the scary so exterior. True. <laughs> so true. <laughs> All right, I know you're trying to. You're bursting with some funny stories, man. So you mentioned a couple earlier. Well, what 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 happened? I, I suppose it's time to let the cat out of the bag, Pastor Keith. <laughs> and I've got a confession to make as well. Ooh, I love this So I, um, it all started when um, we went on my first mission, ship, mission trip with Pastor Keith, and I'm like, yeah, newly married. He's like, come along. I'm like, mission trip, this is going to be easy. It's a glorified holiday. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting by the pool, eating, drinking pina coladas. We might go to a church service here or then, but... At this time, we're um, beelining through customs because someone wouldn't let me go to the toilet because we were running late. We had to beat the line. 
At this point, we're on a missions trip and we've pretty much shopped every single day. <laughs> One morning, we're like, I'm, I'm literally every morning getting woken up by Pastor Keith. You ready? You ready? I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 let's go. Right, oh, give me five, let me get in the shower. And we're walking down the street, and we've walked this street that many times, and I think um, the confession is, is, I think we've got an undercover closet metrosexual. <laughs> I worked out when this happened was we were negotiating on a cheap $5 watch that was red because it had to match your shoes. <laughs> and um, then I'm like, okay, rightio, and then this is pretty cool. And then my, my confession is, Pastor Keith, is that we went out for dinner one night, and I'm like, I am not eating that because that does not look right. And he's like, no, you've got to be polite. You've got to eat everything. Four hours later, he, I get a phone call. You better come up to my room. And I see Pastor Keith in the fetal position. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> but then I rang Pastor Janet and said, he's fine. He's just faking it. And then um, <clears throat> and I'm saying, my confession is, Pastor time. Keith, I was seri seriously like praising the Lord and thinking this was a mission trip miracle because I didn't have to go shopping for the next couple of days. <laughs> and I could literally hang by the pool. And I'm ordering pina coladas. My pastor's up there not watching what I'm doing, drinking it. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's, been, there's been many a shopping trip overseas, hasn't there, definitely, Pastor Keith? Definitely loves to shop, yes. The, 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 the seven levels of Mangadua. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we did that in about... A couple of times. Yeah, I know. A couple of times in one trip yeah. because you have to go back because I didn't get that, that watch at that right price. Yes. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's so good. All right. Any, uh, any funny stories from you, Holly? Oh, uh, I can't go past pre-marriage counselling. Oh, really? I, could, I won't go, like, details, of course. Yeah, we're going to be sensitive but, right yeah, now. Definitely. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's pretty special when you, like, get on someone's couch in their house and you're talking about marriage and sex and all those fun things. Um, but I remember saying to them after we got married, we need post-marriage counselling, not just... <laughs> Not just free marriage counselling. And I loved it because I'd say to Pastor Janet, can we come over for dinner? Like, we need some help. We're struggling. Wow. I wasn't struggling. No. No, but I loved it because I feel like Emil only ever listens to Pastor Keith, no one else. But he was always on my side. <laughs> I don't know why. It just happened that it's way. Ridiculous. <laughs> that is but awesome. Those were some fun memories. So let's, let's switch gears into legacy now. Would you say that your marriage has been part of a legacy of Pastor Keith and Janet? 100%. Um, I wouldn't say I don't think you'd ever, we'd make it, but there's, in a, in, even marriage when someone calls you out of the blue and goes, how are you doing? How's things going? Let's have a catch up and yep. stuff like that. That was um, pretty important to us and pretty special for us, especially... Um, Pastor Keith did, I grew up without a dad and took me under my wing a bit, his wing a bit, which was pretty special. That's awesome. Um, wow. So it was good to have like real conversation and stuff like that. So yeah, it's good. Someone I think to when check you're in. talking legacy, like something they've fostered and created here, which is church family, which is beyond just a service and a building and so good. A, a church name or whatever. Right. Like church family, you can never you never go past that. Like, that's something that stays with you forever. And I think definitely marriage, but being a part of the church family as a whole, like, I remember thinking, I've got so many people here that maybe I don't see them or talk to them every week, but that I know I could call if I was in trouble. And 100% that's their legacy that they've created. And um, yep. just solid relationships and friendships and 50 aunties and uncles and grandparents. And right. Like, right. and having a marriage within that context is everything. And that's so, how so a part of how, why we've made it. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make it. That's true. <laughs> and we'll be having words later on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh. Yes, boss. Doesn't mean what you think it means. Oh. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, guys. Uh, anything, anything else to add? I think... Um, for me, the most important thing that I've had with these guys is that it's not always what they say, it's um, what speaks Jesus to me is that you can come as you are, 
never felt judged. I can be who I am day to day with Pastor Keith. I can speak real. I can fight with him, wrestle with him, tell him that gambling's okay, <laughs> even though he wanted me to tie 10% if I won, <laughs> and never, ever, ever felt judged, condemned. Always, I can go to him and I know that I can come as I am and be loved. And for me, my mum did that to me. And for me, that's what Jesus is, you know? Come, come as you are, yep. no judgment. So good. And you love. So we've always known that. Here's, here's Jesus to me, you know? In that, like, you know, that's, that's just, and that's what I want in my family, you know? Yep. I want my kids to be able to come, not feel judged. And I've learned that from my mum and Pastor Keith and Janet. So come thank on, you. Come on, come on. Let me put our hands together for these two. Thanks, guys. You turn your uh, attention to the screen again for some more videos. Thanks. Keith and Janet, uh, Valerie and I are absolutely delighted yeah. to be able to congratulate you on 25 years of superb service uh, in the city of Newcastle and beyond. Yeah. You've had a great influence over a lot of people. And we pray that as you move on to your next season, you'll continue to have a wonderful influence. We miss you. Yeah. We love you. You're very dear to us. And uh, we know you're going to have a marvellous day of celebration. Wish we could be there, but we're kind of stuck on the other side of the world. Uh, and so have a marvellous day. We love you dearly. And we just are thankful for you both and wish you all the very best for your future. Yeah, and big shout out to Nathan and Rachel, yes. who are, wow, stepping in. So good for you. Congratulations. We'll be praying for you, believing for you. Um, it's so fun to think you were here in London with us many years ago, and yes. look at you now. Oh, so, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Come we, to London and look what happens. I know. And then there's that. But seriously, lots and lots of love to you and the family, and we're believing for you and excited to see how you move into your future. Absolutely. So have a marvelous day of celebration. Hey. We send you our love and congratulations for a very phenomenal, fruitful 25-year season of exciting ministry. Keith and Janet, you've taught us how to overcome in the middle of a storm. Your legacy lives on, and it's amazing how God swapped us uh, countries to minister in. We're so proud of you both, and thank you for being such great friends, true leaders, and champions of faith. All the best in this next season. So good. That's awesome. Would you like to welcome David and Judy Griffiths to the stage? So good. And uh, you guys have had just such a, a long and great journey with Pastor Keith and Janet. Come on, we're not that old. Yeah. <laughs> And we actually have known them the least amount of time. Have you really? Yeah. But, so what's the time frame for you guys? We, we were working back, and we think it was around about the end of 2003, early 2004. Yep. It was interesting when Pastor Keith mentioned the No Limits Conference. So I clearly remember Ian coming and doing No Limits Conference in 2004. So we were certainly in the victory saddle by that stage. Yep. And if I could take this opportunity just to have a bit of a prophetic word, I believe Great. No Limits is a word for Keith and Janet. Come it's on. a word for Nate and Rachel, and it's a word for this church. Mm. Going forward, no limits mm. is where we're heading. Wow. Amen. Wow. Love that. That's awesome. So both of you came on the scene at the same time, and... We're married, so yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. well, we do speak occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> what, what were your like, first impressions? Uh, who is this weird guy <laughs> with a strange accent? And then... Um, we realised just how strong a team that they are and work together in ministry and encourage everyone to be a team and to work together. Um, yeah. I love that. That's so good. What about you, Dad? First impressions, I think he had this seedy moustache, if I remember right, wasn't it? That, and, and he had a name. When, when we first came, he was known as Chuck. So um, between then and now, there's been a name change and Pastor Keith will fill you in why that, what the history was with that. But... We often saw Pastor Keith up on the stage, but Janet was there behind the scenes, and we've heard of her tremendous gift for prayer, uh, support, for encouragement and prophetic um, insight into situations. When I think back to our early days, I have trouble separating meeting Pastor Keith and Janet from joining Victory, because Victory was so much their heart, 
with so much of their themselves that they'd said into the team. So it's, it's a bit, bit of a blur as to whether we met Victory first or, or Pastor Keith and Janet, but it was a great experience and we felt like we were on, on holy ground meeting wow. these guys and, and coming into a, a church that was on fire. Yep. And that was, that was the experience of coming to Victory, wasn't it? It was coming into a place that was alive, it was on fire. I was like, what is going on right here? Yeah, it yeah, certainly was. And something else that we found welcoming, and Dave and the rest of the family didn't know, I'd thrown out a fleece before God that if this is the church we're meant to stay, that within two weeks, all of our family members will feel welcomed in a way that was appropriate to them and invited to something, and that happened. Wow. That's awesome. So... In the early days, any stories that, you know, kind of pop up? Where do we start? <laughs> any stories that are appropriate for right now that yeah, pop well, up? I, I, was, I was wondering where Emil was going and I thought, yeah. But uh, I, I think one of the themes that's come through the three couples is we know that Pastor Keith likes shopping. Yeah. And we, we've had the privilege of going on a couple of holidays with these guys and I distinctly remember walking from one end of Waikiki Beach to the other end looking for a particular shirt that Pastor Keith had already researched and knew exactly what he wanted and we just had to find that shop that had it. And we did eventually and, and not only find the shirt but once he gets what he's after, he's got a barter. He's, he's quite a keen bargainer. You know, the price doesn't mean the price. You've got to haggle them down. So that was one experience. On, on the same holiday, actually, we went via Bora Bora on the way home and we had the privilege of going for a, a snorkel with the sharks and the manta rays. And in, in a bit of fear and trepidation, I thought... Oh, oh, you know, invite Pastor Keith along. And he was keen to do it. And I thought, now if a shark's going to be hungry, are they going to want a mere mortal from the congregation or are they rather the flesh of a senior pastor? And I thought, there, there's a much worthy, uh, you know, dinner you were for safe. the sharks. Yeah. You thought you were safe. That's yeah, awesome. but it, we had a great time, didn't we, Keith? Yeah. And I, from that same trip, I remember... Keith in the water like a little kid, so happy, so excited. We all were, I might add, but yeah. <laughs> it was, it was right. good value. And um, I remember walking through our first visit to the Philippines together, <laughs> Janet. <laughs> There's some things I won't say, <laughs> but this was when we went to cross the road in Manila. And I'd, been, I'd lived there for 12 months, so I was uh, uh, years ago, but I was uh, used to the traffic. Um, I'm sort of stepping out and she's going, you can't do that! There's cars! And I said, they'll stop, trust me. And she's like, no, 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 Let's come on. So just step out in confidence, they will stop. So we start to cross the road, weaving our way, and she, all I can hear behind me is, Jesus, 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 Jesus is in control, Jesus is on the throne, I'm, oh, Jesus, Jesus! <laughs> and we made it to the other side. <laughs> And the other, other time was, uh, and I know that there's others here who would remember this and have mixed reactions, 6am um, hearing the hallelujah chorus at the top of her lungs when everyone else was like, you're kidding, you're kidding me, I just want to sleep, what the heck? Oh dear, she's our senior pastor, we can't say a word. <laughs> Respectfully, can you please be quiet? That's how, no, that wouldn't have gone down so well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It, right, right. That's true. Hey, um, what about their impact in your lives and your family? Uh, Can we talk about that? A huge impact. Um, for me, it was always about being stretched, never be comfortable with where you are. Um, and always encouraging you to keep going, keep going, keep going, never give up. Uh, to the, and not let fear rule come from a place of faith, not a place of fear. And like everyone has said, when I first started, like within six months, I should have realised what I was in for joining this church. <laughs> because within six months, suddenly I was finding I was being challenged and I had to step out of my comfort zone. And all I could remember as I did that was Janet saying, Jesus is on the throne, God is in control, and he loves you. And I'm thinking, oh, heck. And here I am about to have my first attempt at trying to interpret for the deaf. Oh, God, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> my hands knew. God knew. <laughs> and that was, and have interpreted every day since. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. New things. What about you, Dave? It's hard to, to cover in, in um, 
20-something years, the legacy that these guys have left, I think there's so many things that come to mind. Um, it was interesting hearing the other couples, and I thought, I can tick that, I can tick that, that, yeah. you know, they, they basically... Um, we're not just leaving a Keith and Janet legacy, it's leaving a legacy of a church and a fellowship. Wow. Pastor Keith preached his last sermon last Sunday, but what was that intro that he did today? Wasn't that a great message? Yeah. And, and it's that um, ability to expound the scriptures, to make them relevant, to, to, to come alive in my life, in my situation. Yeah. Um, to hear, the, hear the, the, um, the way that the power of the gospel, that Romans... 116, the power of the gospel is what these guys are about. They've, they've come to Australia, they've been a witness to the power of the gospel in getting here, in surviving in Wyala, surviving coming to Newcastle and growing the kingdom in that process. So Yesterday I had the privilege of doing a Ken Duncan seminar and I bought a book and last night I was flicking through the book and in the front flap, Ken Duncan had a little thing down the bottom and it said, <clears throat> every day we have a choice. Will we live by fear or will we live by faith? And I think the legacy that these guys have left for me is each day we have a choice. Mm. We live by fear or we live by faith. Yes. And it's in great. stepping out for God, there's lots of times that are fearful, yeah. but are we going to let that overcome yeah. the faith that we have in our God? Yeah. And so that's the legacy that these guys have left. That's awesome. Yep. That's great. awesome. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Can we put our hands together for Dave and Judy Griffiths? So good. Do you want to turn your attention to the screen? I'd like to invite Graham Clothier up to speak as well. Thank you. Hello, Pastor Kit. This is Joshua and Sanita Winarta. We are so thrilled to hear you and Pastor Janet to do the new journey of life to become mentoring. Wow, what an experience. Sanita, want to say? You yeah. are amazing couples. We learn a lot from you and uh, you are a good friend of us and we we so grateful. Thank you so much for being friendship and mentoring us. Our people loves you, wants you to come back again after the COVID times. Thank you, Pastor Keith, Pastor Janet. Woo! We cheer you. Hey, Keith and Janet, congratulations on your 25 years of service there at C3 Church. Praise the Lord for everyone who has come to know Christ, been baptized, discipled, and praise the Lord for the churches that have been planted through the ministry there. And God bless you on your next chapter in ministry. I really do believe that your greatest days can be ahead, guys. And I hope that you know how much I love you and appreciate your ministry. God bless you richly. G'day, Keith and Janet Edwards. I cannot believe it's 25 years oh. of leading C3 Victory. Congratulations. Congratulations to you, Keith and Janet, your family and your team there at C3 Victory. 25 years of church leadership and growth. You guys have done an incredible job. We're so standing in awe of you. It's no easy feat what you have done. You're leaving an incredible legacy and we honour you today. We pray God's richest blessings over your future. Yeah, guys, your impact, particularly Keith as a fellow Carlton supporter, love that, but your impact as leaders is phenomenal. You are leaders of leaders, and you've raised up spiritual sons and daughters who are literally all around the world uh, changing lives and advancing the kingdom of God. And so that, that spiritual fruit is not just fruit that's of the last 25 years. It will go on for generation to generations. And so we celebrate you, 25 years there at Victory, many years in a addition to that in ministry and we have just such a great sense in this next season that you're going to continue to mentor to impact to raise leaders to counsel to yeah, see people great. released into their destiny so the best days are yet to come for both of you and for your church with Rachel and Nate taking on it's an exciting future for you as well so we send our love and Wonderful. celebration we love you God bless Well, Church, um, introducing myself for those who don't know me, Graham Clothier. I'm uh, the longest serving board member at Victory, and uh, I get the privilege today just to do a little bit of a, a, a take on what we as the board thought about this. So, this moment, this celebration day today, has been over three years in the making. And uh, there's been three years of talking, planning, seeking wisdom from God talking to other transition pe uh, uh, people in, in the movement and other places, seeking to get an insight into what transition would look like. And we also need to say to you that this transition was initiated by Keith and Janet. Right? So when that 
first discussion happened in the board over three years ago, all we had was a mountain of questions. We finished the discussion with, well, we need to seek God on that. Well, we need to think about that. And we didn't have a lot of answers at that time. But then we started to see what God was doing. So we saw that it was right for victory. And you've heard from Keith's heart, not only today in the gospel message, but also last week about his heart for the importance of the church to be healthy and the importance of the church to be able to be vibrant and moving forward and his heart and desire for, that, for, for the church to be successful in life. And we knew that it was right for Victory to move forward and it came from their heart, this request to consider the transition. We also saw that it was right for Keith and Janet now, Keith and Janet have got four decades of ministry, leadership experience, leader of leaders. Um, it is time to set them free into a place where they can be more widely used in the kingdom of God. That's how we saw it as a board. Then it became clear over time, because we didn't have a clarity initially, that Nate and Rach were the right people to move forward. Now, firstly, Keith and Janet needed to be clear on that, and that took a little bit of time. And once uh, Nate and Rach uh, were happy with this idea, and as a board, we started talking about timelines, and the timeline to today started to become into view. And so that's sort of how we got here. But what about heart values? So fundamental in the board's thinking was, gee, wouldn't it be great if as a church we could transition roles and leadership and maintain relationships at the end of it. And so that's what we set out to do. And that was the heart of all the people in the process, mostly Keith and Janet and Nate and Rach. And so we stand here today and know that we have actually been successful in that. Praise God. Praise God, because it doesn't always work that way. But it has. So praise to God. We also wanted to release Keith and Janet into this next phase. So yes, they're finishing as senior ministers. Yes, our employment relationship with them closes. But what opens up? What opens up is an opportunity to be free to minister in their core callings anywhere that God calls them to be. And we didn't want as a board to place any tie or restriction on them that will prevent that from happening. So we wanted to make that level of freedom available to them. Now, as a board, I need to let you know, because um, we are stewards with you of the governance of this place, we have met our obligations to Keith and Janet as an employer, but it doesn't stop there. So, out of generosity, the board has released a further gift on top of our obligations that recognises and honours them for their service over the years and their sacrifice over the last 25 years. They're on call 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 25 years. They didn't take pay rises when other staff members got pay rises because they wanted the other staff members to get it first. Janet didn't come on the staff because it didn't have the capacity at the time. So all of these sacrifices are real over the 25 years. So it's quite appropriate that we have recognised and honoured them in that by giving them a gift. So that's in an organisational sense and quite appropriate. But the board also understands that out of relationship and out of honour that you have as individuals towards Keith and Janet, that many of you would want to contribute to a love offering as well. So it's entirely appropriate that I ask that you consider making a love offering to Keith and Janet. Uh, starting today, it may take a little while for you to get organised. So in that, in that request to consider making a love offering to them, I simply want to point out the following. 
Keith and Janet have responded in faith in initiating this transition. Scary step, but they've responded in faith. They make no demands in this transition. Questions, query, pushing out ideas, all of that's happened and that's entirely appropriate, but no demands. And they trust God to supply. Now, it's a journey of faith, we all know that. And sometimes the anxieties of what's going to happen next rise up, but then God is on the throne, <laughs> as we've heard. So they are just normal people trusting God. I would just say to you, church, church here, church in the overflow, church in the room feeds, church and those online who are listening, you have, who have received richly from them are now best place to start and bless them in their new season with enabling finances. So would you consider what God wants you to give? It's out of love and honour. It's your partnership with God who supplies all that you need. It's in faith because God gives you the provision. And it's in wisdom because each one of you is in a different circumstance and it's a wise thing to consider what is appropriate to give in each circumstance. So, church, in closing, and I will pray for a moment, in a moment, uh, would you consider what is right and appropriate for you to give to Keith and Janet as a love offering in celebration of their 25 years of service, care and ministry to you? So I'm going to pray now while you consider that. So Lord God, you are the great provider. You provided Keith and Janet to us to nurture, service provide service to us, to provide counsel to us, to provide leadership to us. Lord, would you grant people now a sense of what is right and appropriate for each person to give and uh, Lord God, you will provide and you will raise up what is necessary and you will provide all of their needs. And Lord, we take with confidence that phrase, no limits. For no limits in what Keith and Janet will be able to do as they are called to do it. Amen. So I'll hand back to Nate and Rach. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Graham. Terrific. <laughs> Just wanted to outline uh, for those of you who want to participate in that love offering, uh, there's a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, obviously, we have online uh, giving capabilities. If you are watching online, uh, there'll be something that will come up in the feed that you can click on uh, that will take you to an opportunity, a, a website, be able to give through that. Uh, otherwise, we have cash and credit card slips uh, at the offering container uh, on the exit. Similarly, if you are watching in the overflow and you would like to participate, the easiest way is online. But again, uh, if you give via credit card or cash, uh, make your way to the offering uh, container after the service and make sure that you entitle it Love Offering. That's going to help Pete a lot this week. Push pay is Pete's favourite way. Uh, let that just resonate in your mind. Push pay is Pete's favourite way uh, if you wish to give. Uh, but I would really encourage you to honour uh, Pastor Keith and Janet in that love offering. With that being said, it's a great privilege of mine and Rachel's to be able to welcome up Pastor Keith and Janet to respond uh, to everything that has been said this morning and look forward to what you guys have to say. And we're, we're sorry, we have more flowers for you. <laughs> yes, that would be wonderful. Thank you. First thing I want to do is just apologize. I forgot Pastors Steve and Liz from New Vine Lakes and, uh, and want to honor you guys. Steve has always been constantly texting and asking and having coffee and uh, been a great, he's, they're next gen also, and so the city is being set up for an incredible move of God, but 
um, I thank God for you, your, your messages over the time. And, and while I was kind of out on sabbatical, he, there was this constant care from them. And it came to our, my 60th, our 40th. Remember that? You guys came, but I forgot them. I apologize for that. And I did mention David and Chris, but um, I hope I haven't missed anybody else. I want to do that. You wanted to say something. I did. I was, I was uh, thinking about it this, this morning and, and then hearing everything everybody was talking about. And I, I thought about the benefit of longevity, the 25 years. And I got to thinking about the milestones. We celebrated some of the milestones. My birthday, my 40th, my 50th, and my 60th. My 40th, you gave me, the church gave me a bracelet. I've got it on. Still have it. You didn't really know me, but because we, we got there, we got here in February. My birthday was in May. And the church gave me a birthday party and gave me this. And they, you welcomed me. Even then, you know, they just, they didn't know us all that well. They still welcomed. So we got to celebrate some big major birthdays among other celebrations. Seeing people, I think another thing about the benefits of longevity is seeing people grow in their faith. Not many people get that privilege is as a minister to be able to go for years and watching people come to church or people that were already there, God give them revelation, um, grow them in their faith, they, we see freedom happen in their lives. We see them, and then as they, um, some people that were young people when they came, when we came, they grow up, they got married, then they had children, and like we married them, we dedicated their children, and that is part of that, the benefits of longevity. And not everybody gets to do that, but we have had that privilege. And I mean, there's so many stories for each, just about each and every one of you. We can, we can talk and we would be here and I'm aware of the time and I'm sure everybody's tummies are starting to growl. But it's just this amazing of seeing and, and it has been a privilege and it still continues to be a privilege. Um, we've, we've been able to see people be baptized. We've seen people uh, be discipled. We've seen, we've, we've come alongside of you and cried with you when you've lost someone. And, and that's, and can actually feel, you know, the Bible talks about it, that we uh, reap, we weep with those who weep and we rejoice with those who rejoice. And so that part of it, of the 25 years of being able to come along and to walk, um, you know, interesting times and great times. And many pastors don't get to do this, and it's been a privilege, and it has humbled us. And um, we did life together, and we still will do life together. Um, and I think the highlight is is today of our pastors and staff and everything, the work that they have done, and the secrets that they've been keeping, and how they've done it. You know, I've walked in on a couple of things, and they're like, you know, I don't know, trying to cover up whatever. And they have been just amazing, and we are so thankful for them, and we are so humbled by this church, by Victory. And, you know, when Keith said it um, last week, that you are our joy and our glory, it's not just a cliche. Our legacy that we see when, like, Rod and Ann oversee all the different ones that have come out from victory, and we've been part of that journey, and we see that. Um, you're our glory and our joy, and you will continue to be that, and you'll continue to do amazing things because you're an amazing, amazing church, victory. So I thank you. Did you want to say anything? Yeah. I just want to qualify shopping. <laughs> It, it, is, it is a sport. <laughs> it, is, it is therapy. It is an anointing. <laughs> Many of you women, you can laugh at me, but you have paid me to give that anointing to your husbands. That's how I get to keep shopping. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Julie.
Uh, no, what do I want to say? Last, last kind of thing. I do want to say again, um, you know, some churches and some pastors, the, tran- uh, the transition has been horrendous. We're working with the church right now. They're trying to do a transition without somebody to transition to. And that, that's a hard thing. Um, we're so grateful for Nate and Rach. And it was Janet in 2013. I don't remember what month. We started our first D group. They walked into our back room. And Janet said, you think they could be the ones? I said, don't be stupid. They're going to California. Because at that stage, we thought they were. And, we just, and, and of course, Janet, what did you say to Rach about going into ministry? I don't know. I probably just laughed you, you, at no, her. No, you told her you, she has a ministry calling. And she said, yes, oh, no, he does, right. not me. I did. I did say, you know, you have a God's got a calling. He's got something for you. And she's gone, no. Nope. to watch her blossom has been yep. uh, just one of the greatest joys. So yes. their attitude through this has been impeccable. Yep. And they have never, ever once tried to grab or take away anything or be quick at anything. As a matter of fact, they've been a bit reserved and I've had to push them forward at times uh, because I know they need to step forward. So they've been impeccable. The board has been tremendous and you guys have been great. And uh, we love you and thank God for you. And this is our home and it still will be. And uh, we need to finish. That's right. We do. But again, next week is going to be awesome. Why don't we stand up? I don't know what are we doing next. Do you know what we're doing? I, I didn't know. They didn't tell us anything except for be ready. But are you taking over? We, we are. You can stay here just for a oh. second, though. Okay. That's, that's can fine. I... You can drop the mic, preferably on the carpet. No, do that. <laughs> Potential that it will drop survive. It <laughs> um, I would ask uh, everyone, not just in the auditorium, but also out in the foyer, if you could please be standing. We're going to... Uh, come to the close of our service now and we feel as if it would be incredibly fitting uh, to applaud you guys with a standing ovation. Um, And I'd ask that uh, you maybe go down the stairs and and out into the foyer. And if you want to come all the way back around, you absolutely can do that. But I know there's a whole lot of people that are out there that are super keen to see you and applaud you. Um, So we love you. Thank you. um, And we are committed to the legacy moving forward, Uh, not just as leaders, but as the church. I think I speak on behalf of the church when I say we're committed. Um, Words will never be enough and it will never be the right time, I think, to put a full stop. But why don't we begin to celebrate our senior ministers, Pastor Keith and Janet.